Yo, what up? It's your boy with JJ Stone, aka Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. It's not Tuesday, it's Thursday, and both of my regular co-hosts are not here. I kicked them to the curb and brought my man E Rock out in these streets. What's up, E? What's happening, dude? Eagles training camp is underway. Isn't it so nice when you see all the social media posts about the boys walking into the building and you smell the grass and you hear the crack of the pads and you're like, oh, it's here. It's <laughs> here. Was Jalen smiling? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Jalen smiled when he came out the little tunnel. I. I think he was smiling. I think he was happy to. Uh, to. To be back in action with the poise with the team. And. And it is. It's. We're grown men and we're we're getting old, but I still feel like a five year old. Like once I know that football is coming, like I can smell it. Like I'd be randomly just walking around like, oh man. <laughs> like you just you can't. It's like it's like pre Christmas. You know you know it's coming. It's right there waiting for you. Absolutely. And dude, that void, that void is tough, man. Listen, I'm not trying to wish my summer away. You know how much time I spend down the beach and fishing and, and enjoying my summer completely. But man, there is there is a good like post NFL draft to training camp. Yeah, we got the Phils. We're all happy about the Phils. Attended a couple games, psyched about them. But like we need Philadelphia needs football like we need oxygen. You know what I mean? It's just it's just part it's so embedded in the culture of the city that when it's when it's time and when it's finally here, it's like, oh, we got it until January, baby. So I'm not I'm not going I'm not going to drug you yet, but I might I might uh, kidnap you and drug you, man. We I could put some flyers in your veins right now. We got a, a Russian invasion coming right now. Uh, the Sixers actually didn't spend a whole bunch of money, not my money, but they spent a whole bunch of money and things feel good on paper. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then the Phillies, the Phillies are struggling right now, but the Phillies have been up all summer. So I feel what you're saying, but they've been doing stuff. To help get me by this summer. Usually, sometimes you're right. Like it's, it's the drags of summer, and all you got is a below 500 baseball team, and you're just like, what am I even doing in my life besides fishing? <laughs> but at least right now, you know what I mean. I got, I got USA. I got the Olympics. I got we we got a whole we got a whole bunch of stuff going on right now, and it, it's just exciting times. And just remember, uh, Jason and Harry, you guys can be replaced at any time. So watch yourselves as co-hosts of the show. I can call people. I got friends. It ain't just y'all. Y'all ain't my only friends. I got just so you know. All right, you know what I'm saying? I ain't paying you either. Don't worry about that. He ain't get paid. He here for free. Don't worry about that. But I just know you can be replaced. I hear in these streets. Um, <laughs> so are you are you are you all right? And I, I know you've been sad. I know I know you've been crying a couple times this week too. No, no, Jason Kelsey for the first time in like a decade plus. I know. Did, did you see the John Clark tweet of a picture of him walking in the building? Yeah. Yeah, like, like, listen, I, I heard long before it, it became like Slay said it on his podcast, but uh, Jason's been in that building almost every day. Any available day that he has, he's in there working out, and it's a comforting feeling because, listen, I, I don't think he wanted to fully walk away. He knew he had to. I think he knew it was time. His family knew it was time. But I can't imagine a world where Jason Kelsey isn't intimately involved with football and the Eagles. You know what I mean? It's great to see him on Monday Night Football, and he's going to have an outstanding broadcasting career, and he has the potential to be the biggest post-on-the-field personality in football broadcasting since John Madden. I truly believe that. But seeing him still walking in the building, you know Cam is picking his brain. You know he's still – giving coaching points and just having hit. There's nothing wrong with the world needs more Jason Kelsey. Right. And you don't always want to share it with the world, but the Eagles need more Jason Kelsey. So I was happy to see him there. Well, I'm, I'm here as always to burst your bubble. And that all sounded great. That man is the new John Madden. He is a star. He is a supernova. And as much as he comes to that practice facility every single day, season starts, he is gone. After this season, he's going to have one year under his belt, and he will have a bus, a plane, a rocket ship to get around the country. He will not have time for us. Our supermodel is leaving us, okay? Everybody wants a piece. And I know he'll come back and visit, and he'll and he'll put the hat on, and, and he'll shine for us every once in a blue moon. We don't lost him, dog. He, he is 
Gonzo. And I, I, I'm already, I'm preparing myself for the pain. I know that it is that he is so fun and talented and smart and just a common denominator of a human being that I can't see him not just ramping up and elevating. Like he just got to put the whole family on the bus and just take them with him. Coast to coast, Key West to Key Largo, because the more I see him do, he doesn't annoy me. His brother annoys me. His brother's a cornball. Love his brother to death, but his brother's a cornball. His brother is the 1994 WWE wrestling little brother that you put through the table 42 times. You love him to death, and you love putting him through the table, but he's cornball. Jason is real. That dude is, like, legit. Like, he's the cool guy where you're like, man, if I could be another dude besides myself, and I love myself, I wouldn't mind yeah. being Jason Kelsey. I wouldn't mind. So I'm just preparing you, brother. Because that man, I know, I know. Woo! Let me enjoy. Let me enjoy it while I still got it, dude. Because <laughs> even when he was up in Buffalo, right, shirtless and screaming and doing the whole thing, like it was great to see. Like, hey, Jason Kelsey, you know, blah 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 blah. I'll be honest, I got a little jealous, like boyfriend, yep. uh, being like, yeah, okay, you had fun, Buffalo. You can give him back. He's our guy. Like, we know he's fun. We know he's a good time. You got a little taste of it, but uh, you know, like, like he's with us. He's ours. So back off. So that's the first time I felt like where my mind just shifted, where I just told you to explain myself. That's the first time where my mind was like, oh, it's over now. Like, I, I enjoyed the the Tour de France of, you know, Eagles, Jason Kelsey, here, there, like popping up everywhere. Because it just, it also, sp- he's, he's an ambassador. He spreads the lore of Philadelphia everywhere he goes. And he is a, a model citizen for that. He is a beacon of hope and light for our city. But, man, that light is like, in China, that light is like on Mars now, and that light, like, the the light is just traveling everywhere, and it's getting further and further from home. But I I, I wouldn't want it any other way. If there's somebody who's got to be out there, um, uh, being a man of the town and, and having fun, and we and we need we desperately need a Madden type figure. I loved John Madden growing up. Um, you know, I can't even wear my other jerseys, but I got a a Raiders jersey in my closet because my dad. Uh, just loved John Madden so much. He 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 loved the, the long family. So I got a long jersey from his dad from the Raiders. And it's just like that essence, it it again, it, it made my dad have respect for the Raiders and where John Madden came because he loved John Madden so much. And that's gonna happen for the Eagles. He's going to go out there and with his knowledge, with his personality, with his empathy, and with his joy, is going to convert people to become an Eagles fans. And that I love too, especially with all these cockroach cowboys running around here that get brought out of the woodwork for no reason somehow. I I, I can't stand it. So let's go, let's yeah. go spread that eagle joy everywhere. I love it. Um, you were on um the fantastic show the other night. I I, I was on the fantastic show the other night. I, I was I was on a couple nights before you were on. I wish we could have collaborated and hung out at the same time. You know, that's too much power for one man to have on one stage. <laughs> Um, hey, 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 listen, won't be for long. Won't yeah, be for won't long. Be for we'll long. save that story for another time, but won't be yeah, for yeah. long. Yeah, we're, 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 trying, we're trying to work on some things in life. Now, I brought that up because have you heard the press conferences and the interviews and things that have come out since training camp? Yeah, yeah. I, I heard all the initial press conferences, yes. So h- how are you feeling about Nick Sirianni and his role? I'm feeling fine about it i don't necessarily understand the infatuation with whose offense is it is it, is it your terminology is it kellen's terminology because i keep circling back to the fact that nobody's asking mike tomlin like yo is this your defense or somebody else's defense they know it's somebody else's defense nobody's asking john harbaugh in baltimore like yo is this your off no he's a special he was a special teams coordinator so when I when I think about Nick Sirianni, I'm like, okay, he need like that role suits him. Let us not forget that when it was Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni in the first year that those were, that was the QB coach combo for the first eight games, that was some of the worst Eagles football that I'd ever seen in my life. I was convinced that Nick Sirianni was not a head coach and that Jalen Hurts was not an NFL quarterback. I was convinced of it because I, 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 I'm, I'm working off the evidence. I can work off of blind faith. I, I do trust me. I'm an Eagles fan. I do that plenty, but I also work off of what I'm seeing. And I was convinced that we were in a lot of trouble until 
Nick started giving up the play calling. Then all of a sudden you started seeing Jalen get better. And that's not, that's not a knock. That's not a, I prefer a CEO type overseer of the game type of head coach. I always have, because I feel when your head's buried in a play chart too much, you start to lose a feel for the game. Andy's a great coach, but sometimes he, you know, when he was with the Eagles, he would lose the feel for the game. Doug was a great coach, but all of a sudden he would lose the feel for the game. Nick was even more of a blatant, um, it was even more blatant with Nick. So I'm not – now what I am concerned about a little bit is the relationship between quarterback and coach because that has to be – that is not an average relationship. That is a marriage. And if the quarterback feels some kind of way about the head coach or blames the head coach for something – or doesn't like his childish antics, or keeps pulling, tugging on him on the sideline to prevent him from talking shit to the other team, that all of a sudden becomes like, little. that, that has me a little worried. But you saw in that initial press conference, you could tell Jalen wanted to nip it in the bud. You could tell he was coached up. You could tell his, 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 he was more upbeat. His attitude was better. And listen, I... I, I just need you guys to fake it. If you genuinely don't like each other or, or you know, Jalen doesn't respect Nick, I think Nick respects Jalen, but if Jalen doesn't truly respect Nick, fake it. They paid You're not going anywhere. They paid you all this money. You're staying. In fact, one or the other, if, you know, if the Eagles have a bad year, but I, I would be more looking at Jalen than I would Nick, believe it or not. So... <clears throat> First of all, I'll push back on that. Obviously, I agree with what you're saying, but I want to give you a, a, the opposite opinion. Um, one, Jalen has a new trade clause. Nick doesn't have that protection. Um, but so I too like CEO coaches. The difference between Tomlin is Tomlin is a defensive mind. He also is a um, confident, steady force of nature, and he's a defensive guy. He is aggressive. He never claimed to be anything but a defensive guy. And everybody thinks that it's his defense. It's always Tomlin's defense, no matter what. Now, the offense is the exact opposite. He has no bearing on that. He doesn't even walk over there, check on anything. So when something goes bad, they blame the quarterback or the OC, and then they just swap him out over and over and over again now. But the defense is Tomlin's defense. And he is credited for that. It's his defense. Now, the Ravens, on the other hand, that's more of a, a similar scenario. You go from a special teams coach to where you don't have the expertise or specialty of running the top running offense in the league or being part of the top defense in the league. And that's more comparable. And the only thing I'll say again is just competency level. When he came from the Eagles, a great organization, and he goes to the Ravens, another well-run organization, you get a certain cachet after a year or two. But he also had the benefit of having like a Ray Lewis there, like a defense that was built and and and, and had some kind of power that allowed him to stay longer. Now, Nick is obviously newer and younger, so he doesn't have the credibility to learn like how Andy did. Like you said, like Andy didn't know uh, a lot. Of, he made a lot of mistakes early on, even though he had a, a good offensive mind. So... As far as I'm concerned with Nick, I, too, don't need Nick running the offense because he was on PlayStation mode. It was the X button was stuck. Run, 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 run. Pass, 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 pass. It was, you know, he was stuck in a cycle. Oh, he went a game and forgot to throw to the tight end. Like, oh, I forgot to call play. To, like, how do you do that? Yeah, shit do you go, like that. Do you go, shit like that. You yeah. game? It's, again, like you're just stuck in the mode. And I get that. There's a lot going on. The problem is. I watched your uh, speech of what Nick should say. Now, you and I have both given speeches about that. We're both eloquent speakers, so we sound good. Like, if, if you want to get your team charged up, you know what I mean? If you got a high school team going to a championship, call me and E-Rock out. I know you can't afford to get Nick's ear out there. He's a busy guy. But if you want to get some motivation, you or I could go out there and hype a team up to run through a brick wall for us easily without, without preparation. Yeah. Nick is not that guy. I don't know what he's doing behind the scenes, but when he talks in public, he's not a great public speaker. So he doesn't give that confidence. What I would really need Nick to do because he knows he's getting asked these questions is stop floundering around when they're saying, well, what are you doing? Well, I usually spend all my time in the quarterback room. Now I'm going to go spend time in the other rooms. I, I would just say, hey, look, <clears throat> now the CEO type thing, I have these other things taken off my plate. 
I, I still am in touch with and helping run the offense, but I'm also in touch with special teams where we had some faltering mistakes last year. On the defense, I'm trying to make sure that there's co cohesion between all of the coaches, not just the defensive coordinator. There's a linebacker's coach. There's a cornerback's coach. I'm a wide receiver guy. I'm talking to the wide receiver's coach. Like Now that I'm a CEO, I can go in station to station and spend time and make sure that we're all on the same page because everyone is reporting to me, and I'm filtering right. that information back throughout the team. Now, I know it's hard to say that when you're not a, a, a speaker, but he needs to be coached up to set because that's essentially what he's doing or what he what he plans to do, he just doesn't say it right. So it doesn't give the random average person the confidence in what he says when he's up there speaking. That's the difference between what Harbaugh does. He just is a bop, 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 bop to where the questions stop. Here, the questions are getting asked all the time. I'm glad Jalen cut off ESP the other day because he obviously knew what the question was going to be. I don't need them to fake it. I watched Brady and, and uh, Belichick go out there and win championships and win games all the time. But again, that guy was running the defense. You didn't question that was his defense. The offense was not his, but he was so good at defense that it also made the offense better because if you got to go against that all the time, it makes you better. So right now, I don't need them. They're, they're going to be cordial. They're fine. They're all professionals, and, and all that's good. Jalen <laughs> better be in love with Kellen Moore because yeah. he's had 10 offensive coordinators in eight years or whatever it's been, the, the number's crazy. You know, he 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 explains that because people ask the question. And sometimes people try to say, oh, he, uh, uh, he's given an excuse, a pre-excuse in case something goes wrong. It's actually a fact. Yeah, it is. It's it's just a fact. And so when you ask, how have you got, have you learned an offense? Well, it's just, he has to explain that this is something new. Now, you know, if you listen to training camp, he looks crisp, he looks on point. All you and I can hope for, I believe, is – a wrinkle in the offense that hasn't been done yet in Philadelphia so that we can go and, and, and take other teams by surprise going forward, because we have run a very similar offense in the last three years and the league catches up with you. So I, 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 I want to believe in Nick Sirianni so bad, yeah. but we also have this problem. If the team does well, let's say I'm not going to say win the Super Bowl. Let's say we make it to the conference championship. The team is doing great. We, let's say we put up 38 points and we lose in the conference championship. What do you do when they try to take Kellen Moore from you? Because Kellen Moore hasn't gotten a, a head coaching position yet because apparently he might be a bad interviewer. He sounds like a good – the same thing with Nick Sirianni. Nick might be a good interviewer, but he's a bad speaker. Kellen Moore is a great speaker, but he's a bad interviewer. Apparently he's been offered a head coaching jobs a bunch of times. He can't close the deal. But when you're here in Philadelphia, you and I both know, great organization, media training 101 after a year. Apparently, everything we do is gold and people come and pay for it. So if we do great and he leaves, then what? We got Nick, new offense coordinator again. If we do poorly, do we let Nick go and, and keep Kellamore or say, hey, both of you guys are out? Like, it's, it's the Wild Wild West, bro. My answer to that is we will cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. Like I can't not do the right thing right now because I'm worried about what may happen or losing a guy next year. The best possible thing for this team, this offense, this head coach, more importantly, this quarterback was going out and getting the best possible young offensive mind that they possibly could an individual who by the way interviewed for said head coaching job before Nick Sirianni got hired so the organization is uh, intimately knowledgeable about him he's been within the division granted San, uh, San Diego LA was a dumpster fire last year so this, uh, it's almost like you chalk that up as the outlier yeah but like, I, I am not worried about losing Kellen Moore. And you're you're 100% right. Listen, the spotlight's on Philadelphia. It just is what it is. It's a major market. It's going to get a lot of NFL attention. And when you come to Philadelphia, there's a good chance that Philadelphia, if you're a coordinator or even an assistant general manager or a front office type, that you are using Philadelphia as a stepping stone for bigger and better opportunities because eyes are going to be on you differently than you would be if you were at San Diego or at Indianapolis or at Jacksonville or at Arizona or any of these small, smaller market teams, you are going to get opportunities. I don't want to take a lesser talented, a lesser 
innovative, a lesser fit for Jalen Hurts because I'm worried about losing. Coordinators will come and go. It's the NFL. It happens all the time. You've even seen it uh, in the front office every year. It was like, oh, my God, we're losing Joe Douglas. What are we to do? We still got an hour. <laughs> oh, my God, we're losing Andy Weidel to the Pittsburgh. All right, we're fine. Dude. We're fine. Oh, my God, we're losing Deuce. That we're we're going to be okay. Deuce, Deuce is a great guy. But you know what? We're going we're gonna to be okay. So coaches and front office staff come and go. What you have to look at is this is one of the most talented Eagles teams. We've been saying this for a couple of years. Yeah. One of the most talented Eagles teams that we've ever had last year was ridiculously obvious that it was on coaching. You took for granted the talent you had on your team and you put in place two rookie signal callers that didn't know what the hell they were doing. And the team suffered due to coaching. OK, go get Kellen Moore, who's the best possible fit as offensive coordinator. And listen, the defense, they're playing a little soft. Jalen or, or, or Jordan Davis is out of shape. Jalen Carter needs like a – he needs a strong mentor figure as a defensive coordinator. You know what? Go get old Nick or, or old Vic Fangio, that curmudgeon, and just – you know what I mean? So so they know playtime's over. And that's what they wanted in the first place, but we got screwed over by the Ghana situation right. and everything got stretched out. So that that is who they wanted because – that. That is the defense that um, Howie and I, I, by proxy, Lori likes, and he is the godfather of that style of defense. So if you're going to run that defense and you're going to draft for that kind of personnel, why not get the guy that um, created it or or fostered the best of it to have other people copy it? And and to your point, he is also known as a hard-nosed, old-school, not player-friendly coach. Right. Which for me, when you have a lot of younger guys, that's actually good. When you got a lot of vets, they're old and they like, look, man, I done been through the ringer. I know what it is. I'm not putting up with that from you. Like, come on, dude. But when you're young and you're trying to make your bones in the league and you want to stay in the league, you've got vets that are looking at you like, hey, bro, I know it's hard. I put in the work. Now you got to put in the work and listen to the old timer because he's telling you the old school. I used to have to do that. So the, the mix of the, the age that we have, I believe, is going to actually benefit so much by his no-nonsense style of coaching. Normally, I'd be like, man, that's kind of iffy. But we're so young right now. We've reloaded right. so much on defense. I need, I, again, quote-unquote, I need an adult in the room. I need a dude that's a dude that's right. going to whip these guys into shape and, and, and tell them how to be pros, whether they want to hear it or not. Because, again, you get that fine line point of like, I'm 27 and I'm making $40 million a year, bro. I don't have to listen to you versus yeah. the I'm 21. Yeah, I got millions, but I'm hungry for that second contract, dog. What I got to do? I see yeah. you don't put dudes in a pro ball. I didn't see them made dudes all pro. How do I get there? How do right. I become the guy that's sought after as the best in this position? And I, I feel like he's going to get a lot of that out of these. Do these Georgia dogs better hunt this year. These Georgia dogs need to hunt. And listen, the Georgia kids, you know, from, from people that I talked to, the Georgia kids were, uh, you know, I don't want to say a little bit of a problem, but, the, you know, they were – they needed to be reeled in, man. They had their own little click going. They needed to be reeled in. You know, when they're talking about, hey, the, the, the workouts and the training camps and the conditioning, man, it was harder at Georgia than it is in Philadelphia. And all of a sudden they're like, you know, they, they're making – hey, we made it. That's what I love about Vic Fan. Like, you already see. It's already happening. Jordan Davis showed up to OTAs looking the best he ever has, ever, ever. He's in great shape. Jalen Carter, great shape. You hear these guys talk. What did, what, I think Jordan Davis said in, uh, after OTAs in an inter, uh, or in, a, in the press conference, like, hey, Fletch is gone. Fletch is not here to protect us anymore. Like, we can't just go in for a couple play. We're going we're gonna to be the guys now. So I think whatever messaging, especially on defense and especially to the Georgia guys that they're doing via Vic Fangio or otherwise, they're hearing it and it's showing. It's sh like it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to see Jordan Davis showing up in, in incredible like in, he looks like a different person. Like he looks great. Yeah. So you just hope that that's infectious and that's the messaging for the entire team. Because, listen, a lot's going to be expected of this defense. They, they brought in a lot of talent. C.J. Gardner-Johnson is back. White's now at linebacker. We'll see if he bounces back from, you know, he was great his first couple of years in Tampa. Uh, Bryce Huff, he, you know, you're going to need these guys to step up in an incredibly big way because that offense is going to be racking up points. 
So how's the defense going to hold up? You know, I mean, the, you listen, you're going to get you're going to get thrown all over, dude. Get after the quarterback, Pat, you know, get intercept those pet turnover. Like we didn't have nearly enough turnovers. We weren't aggressive enough. We weren't that getting was, after the quarterback. That was the because biggest. Those thing are all happened. recipes for disaster. Yeah. They, they've got to they've got to come with the we got to get the turnover situation back in hand um, where it, it can just tidal wave on you. And I feel like we have the personnel to do that. Um, let me ask you a question. This is a personal question. This is very important. I'm going to put it on you as the deciding factor unless I don't like the answer to which I will be the deciding factor. But if okay. you make the right answer, that's fair. Your show, on, your it's show, on, it's fair. It's on you. So is it Saquon or Barkley? When you speak about the man going forward for the season, I don't think organically he's got a nickname yet. No, no, I know, but it, one of the two choices because I, I there's certain people that keep calling him Barkley, and then people call him Saquon. For you personally, like if you just had to say his name, which one would you choose? I, I, if I if just in casual conversation, I was going to talk about, I say Saquon. Saquon, me yeah. too. For all the people out there that might be listening or know somebody that says it, if they say Barkley, just say Charles. Every time they say Barkley, you know, you know what they're talking about. We could be talking about a Super Bowl run. You could be talking about seven touchdowns, and they say Barkley. You respond with Charles. Because in Philadelphia, you cannot say Barkley to me. You can't say Barkley in a conversation to me when you're talking about Saquon. I know what his name is. I don't care. His name is Saquon. I don't know if he has a nickname either. I don't. Th- 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 when you got his name like Saquon, Saquon's sexy enough to be Saquon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 Le- Le- LeBron. I mean, now there's a whole bunch of babies out there named LeBron, but there's just one LeBron. You don't know another LeBron. You know what I mean? Like it, it's just what it is. LeBron so, James. LeBron James. So I'm like, I I can't have people calling this guy Barkley. I I I can't. I hear it a lot now, and it's, it's irking me. I'm like, stop calling him Barkley, stop it. So say, you, you know what, VG? I that never that never bothered me. I, I I never picked up on that. I never even thought about Charles until that now, now now that now that's all I'm going to hear. That's all you're going to hear. So <laughs> this person said, "Do you say thanks, Joel?" Thanks, or thanks for thanks for ruining it for me. I, well, I didn't ruin it. You made the right decision. So you you, <laughs> made, you you and me. I didn't. We we are together. We are united. I, I'm about to get a T-shirt made that says Saquon, not Barkley. I mean, I can't. Just, you got to stop saying it. Like, I, I don't like it. And as far as Joel, there, what other what other Joel is there when you say Joel in Philadelphia? The issue is the, 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 the area you're in, Philadelphia. Like, you say Joel, you know it's Joel. Or you can say Embiid. You can say Troel. You, you know the difference. Now, Jalen, when there's another Jalen around, like, you know, it's like, okay, Jalen Hurts. Like, you kind of say his name all together. Yeah. Jordan Davis, you know what I mean? Like, there's certain there's certain names where you just, you know, like Fletcher, like you just say Fletcher, you know what yeah. I mean? Or you say Cox, like you you can say them separately because there there's only one of them. But when right. you have something like Barkley, and I'm in the middle of a conversation, especially if I come in late. If I come in late and I think we're talking about Charles Barkley, and the next thing I know, I, I'm I'm running the ball down the middle, and I'm like, wait, 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 what? I thought we were talking about b- 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 basketball. So that that's all. I just wanted to. <laughs> Wanted to check in on that. Um, just for the official record, like I said, if anybody has a problem, uh talk to Erock at erock.com, www.erock at Twitter, www.erock. Uh, his address is 7711 Banana Street. You can go talk to him personally. <laughs> There's no problem taking all comers that have issues with that. So as far as the offense is concerned and Saquon is concerned, I I can't underestimate how happy I am about this move because for the people that don't understand how important it is for when you quote unquote have a loaded offense to have a do it all back. I literally just say, look at our nemesis, the San Francisco 49ers. Their offense with Jimmy Garoppolo got them to a Super Bowl and they always kept coming up short, but the offense was relying on their defense to make those runs. Their defense was doing good enough. Jimmy just had to put up 10 points and not mess up. Now these guys could put up 40 on a whim. And they still have to win some games, you know, 13 to 14 or, or, or win by five or something like that with the defense coming in. But their power changed by getting McCaffrey there because right. he is an every down back. And Saquon is going to be that for Philadelphia. He's going to be that outlet, that vow for when things are a little tight, he can explode for a 70-yard run. 
He can explode for a 34 yard catch out of the back. He's going to pick up that extra blitzer um, when someone's breaking through on the line and Jalen just needs one more second. He is the scary threat of pitch or run. Who do I cover? Because Jalen coming in healthy, at least for the first six weeks of the season, knock on wood for the whole season, he is going to be the dual threat that we missed last year once he got dinged up. Now, he went out there and ran, but he was not healthy enough to run all the time, and he wasn't healthy enough to sacrifice himself in running. So Saquon doesn't fix all things, but he helps all things. And and that's what I'm most excited about. I'm excited about the new offensive coordinator and the new key and weapon in Saquon that unlocks multi-level of options on this team. I don't think we fully grasp as a fan base the impact that Saquon Barkley is going to make on this football team. Right now, even though it's like the biggest thing the Eagles got going, the biggest free agent acquisition, the biggest piece, one of the biggest pieces of news, news of the offseason, what he brings to the table as far as this team in particular, I'm not sure we fully wrapped our head around. Number one, Kellen Moore, and I had to memorize. I had to read it again, read it a third time, and then memorize it. This was from Bleeding Green Nation, so this isn't my stats. These, this is this is what I read from Bleeding Green Nation. Is that in his time with Dallas, Kellen Moore was second in the league in points per game, second in the league in in um, yards per game, seventh or fourth in passing yards and seventh in rushing yards. So everyone's like, well, Kellen Moore isn't going to run the ball. Bullshit. Absolutely he is. Absolutely he is. And he and he needed an every down back. You just talked about the San Francisco 49ers. One of the demises of the 2023 season was the fact that the 49ers picked up on the fact, and, and this is this is document. I can't even get into how this is documented, but it's – Yeah. They know. The 49ers knew based upon the personnel that we were running in and out of the huddle at running back, what the play was. Swift was a great runner, great pass catcher, couldn't pass block worth a goddamn. So if Swift was in the game, it was either a run or a screen. If Gainwell was in the game, that's why we would go stints with like, where's Swift? Why isn't Swift on the field? Why is it all Gainwell? Because it's all passing plays and Swift can't pass block worth a damn. So that so defenses, especially the 49ers, picked up on the fact that our that we were tipping our hand on our basic bitch offense based upon the running backs that we were rotating in. Listen, running back committee can be a great thing. We remember the days of LeGarrette Blunt and Corey Clement and Jay Ajayi and Darren Sprout. That, like that was great because everyone had their own specialty. But when it's tipping your hand on what you're going to do, it's an issue. So now you have an offensive coordinator who, yes. Remember Ezekiel Elliott, the best years of Ezekiel Elliott was under Kellen Moore. Same thing, all purpose, three down back. We are not tipping our hand because Saquon Barkley is in the game. He is going to be asked to do less with more. Usually that's not, that's not the way, right? The, the way is usually you're asked to do more with less. Not the case. And he is the high tide, to speak to what you said, he is the high tide that raises all the boats on offense. He gives Jalen an absolutely reliable runner. He gives Jalen a reliable pass blocker for that blitz pickup that we struggled so much with last year. You can't have just safety safeties staying back for AJ anymore or Smitty anymore. It keeps the safeties honest because guys, you know, that, that people would be like, yeah, throw it on us. These long ass developing basic bitch routes you're running, yeah, we're just going to blitz and then throw the safeties deep, and you're not you're going to get sacked or you're going to throw an interception. We dare you to run the ball, and they couldn't effectively. It does. It makes your offensive line look better. It buys. It, it makes. It, 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 Saquon Barkley is the high tide that raises all boats on offense. I I'm just excited for a time to not know what the play is. I have a good memory. I watch too much football. I rewatch games two and three times. So when I see a formation come up and I'm sitting there at home and we're not playing well and I start calling out the plays, I get angry 
because I'm like, I'm overweight, bald guy with a gap tooth, and I know what's going on. And I don't have an all 22 to look at. I, I know what's about to happen. Yeah. And then when the play fails, I'm like, well, the defense had to know because if my dumb ass knows, then they must know. So yeah, yeah. it's been a while since I saw a play where I'm just like, oh, wow. Not, oh, wow, because you broke the run for 90 yards. That's always exciting. I mean, oh, wow, from like, ah, I didn't expect that out of that formation. That mm-hmm. Okay. Like, uh, I, I, I watch other teams and I do get jealous. I do feel like, wow, that's innovative. And I'm like, that's not even innovative. I saw that like seven years ago, but we just don't run plays like that. So I don't see us running them. And it's like, oh, okay. Now, oh, my camera ran out. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you, buddy. It's just, but it's just me on the screen. Oh, dude, that's scary. Nobody, nobody wants to see that. Like, we got I got to get myself back. <laughs> um, so <laughs> while I'm fixing that, yeah. uh, I will ask you, do you know off the top of your hand your top 10 quarterbacks in the league? I love doing this to you. We don't we don't prep this by the way. When I have guests on or no. I do and you, and you, and you oh, always spring this shit on me and then I and then I forget the easiest answers. Yeah, my, my, you, did my that, you did this with head coaches like what's your Mount Rushmore head coach and some current head coaches or who's who's the t- and then I forgot Andy Reid somehow. So for, was, the, for the few people watching um, it is it is a skill set to have when you're when you're a lesser talent like myself and you're going against like a juggernaut or you got somebody who's like quote unquote important on you hit them with flash questions so that they forget things and they look silly makes me look better. I also have a pen and paper over here, so I write it down. But just a pro tip for you: if you ever feel like you want to boost up yourself and catch somebody in a moment, you can play the yeah. whole. Uh, by the way, just off the top of your head, game. You know what I mean? So let's just let, let's just see what Erocks top ten. Off the top quarterbacks are so we can all laugh at him together. All right. So number okay. one, I'm going to help you out here. Number one is Patrick Fergie Mahomes. Mahomes. Fergie Mahomes. Did you see the Raiders? What they did? No. They brought in a Kermit the Frog today. Put a curly haired wig on it and a uh, a Mahomes jersey, and they walked around and talked like they were Mahomes at their practice today. Hilarious. But I'm like. They're Super Bowl champions, and unless you plan on destroying them two games this year, why would you do that? Why would you? You know, women don't want to go in the woods. They don't want to go in the woods with the man. They want to go in the bear because the bear wouldn't do dumb stuff like that. The bear's not getting poked like that. That is absolutely insane. Uh, make sure you watch that video later. It's actually hilarious, but I'm just like, oh, gosh, why would you do well, that? Do, 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 do me a favor, BG. Since you're the one with the pen and the pad. Yep. And you're the one who knew the question was coming. You yep. clearly have a list in front of you. I don't have a list in front of me. I, the, the list I, I, that I don't. The list is blank. I'm. I'm. I. I just. You know. I just. I'm just good like that. You know what I mean. I just. But I just like messing with you. I just like. You know. It's fun. So okay. We'll we'll go through it together. I wait to check this. Out. I, I'll help you. Out. I. I do. I do like catching you and embarrassing you. Know. It is one of my favorite things to do in our friendship. <laughs> so I'm gonna write seven, eight, nine, ten down there. All right. So we got Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to take the new blonde haired wonder and put him up there and say. Joe Burrow, because everybody. Yeah, I, I was wondering if that was too high for. Me. I wanted to say Burrow, but I was wondering, like, am I missing? I'm not. Somebody? I'm not. I'm not putting them in specific order yet. We're just saying the top ten. We're gonna put them in order. We're just gonna oh, put okay. the top All right. Josh, gonna put Josh Allen. Josh Allen. Allen, and then we're gonna obviously we're gonna put our guy up there, Jalen. Golf, in the top ten. Lamar. Lamar. Okay. Lamar. Remember, we're not ranking yet. Stroud, I am, I, I am so I, a believer I in that, that kid. I am such a believer in that kid. So, yeah, like high, Stroud. We're high, yes, we're how CJ Stroud. You're still not golfing yet. No, no, not yet, not okay. yet. Um, Stafford. Stafford, yes, Stafford. Are you putting the kid Wonder up there from 49ers Club? Absolutely not. Okay, no Brock. I'm gonna put him out there on honorable mentions. He 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 will he will be on the outside looking in, and I know that's gonna piss off a lot of people because statistically this, statistically that. He's got a loaded offense and one of the best offensive minds in the league out there. I wonder what he is without the coach and without McCaffrey and without. Wait, wait, wait you're looking at me. That's going to sound like Jalen Hurts slander. That's what a lot of people try to use on his Jalen Hurts slander. They say, well, if he didn't have that offense, or he didn't have those those wide receivers, he's got the best wide receivers in the league. 
I, I mean, I'll push back. I, we know why that is. He, he's done with yeah. multiple running backs. He's done with different yeah. offensive coordinators. Like, we, we right. know why. I'm just saying that's the general reason they say when people try to discredit Jalen. Well, look at the offense he has. What is he else he's supposed to do? Well, Purdy's got that offense. What is he supposed to do? I will tell you what he does. When Debo goes down, they look like trash. Anyway, so we, he's on the outskirts. So we got Stafford. You don't like golf yet. I'm, I'm putting golf 10. I'm going to put him in there because I, I don't care what you say. I'm putting golf in there 10. I'll explain why. Um, dang, who else? Are you are you putting up there uh, 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 the Jets wonder? Uh, four plays and out. What's his name? Rodgers? Yeah, right. <sighs> I was just to- I was just toying with that idea because it's like do 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 you really want to? I'm putting Rodgers on the outskirts because he didn't play last year, and this is a now list. Yeah, this this is a now list. This is an all time list or an all decade list. No, what, what, like like are, like are you sick of? Do you feel like there is a a at least I do a large sense of Justin Herbert get like overrated? Okay, Ju- Justin Herbert to me is overrated. Do you think he's overrated? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, he Justin Herbert is not even in my top fifteen, and I'll put it this reason why: not even in the top fifteen. Uh, you know why? Because I don't even want to think about it. I want to put him at sixteen and let him go live there until he plays a quote unquote full season or does something in the playoffs besides throw five interceptions in a game. I don't care. It's the same thing about Trevor Lawrence. The prince was promised. I, as a bald man, and you as a bald man, I don't care how many hats you wear, you sexy beast out there with all the outfits and all the clothes. You're so lucky you are half my size and weight. I would rob you. I would break into your home and just steal everything. I would bribe your children with snacks and steaks, and I would rob you. But I can't fit any good stuff you got. Okay, so my bald head is just out here naked and afraid. All right, but these long haired, locked, blue eyed bandits out here killing the league with their sex appeal don't deserve it. That's why I respect Joe Burrow. That's why I put him in there second because he shaved it off, put that thing blind and said it ain't just about my looks it's about my skill level joe burrow is a man uh, uh herbert's trash and so is trevor lawrence the prince that was promised who's not a highest paid quarterback in the league and he doesn't deserve it because he's a trash man that never did nothing never be nothing ain't nothing hate them and hate their hair and yes i'm jealous somebody with a toupee sponsor the show and hook your boy up I'm trying to get my locks back uh, uh, back to this list we need two more i'm not putting aaron Rodgers in there either no, let, 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 let me let me ask you something. All bias aside, put Dak in there. Dakota Rain Prescott, right up there. There we go. Dakota, he's got to be in there. To be fair, to be right. fair, I think I, I think I think like is creeping in at number nine or ten. Dakota Rain Prescott is is is. is not a not a hater's point of view. He was a he was an MVP in the conversation for MVP last year. So we got one more spot left. Right now we got Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurst, Lamar Jackson, C.J. Stroud, Stafford, Dakota Rain, Jared Goff, Tua. So Tua or Love? Which one would you prefer? Now, two. Love, just love, I, I would I would prefer love because it's minus the concussion. I I feel like two is like one hard hit away from being it's over, Johnny. So I'm going to give it to love because again of recency bias. And last mm-hmm. year they started off eight and nine, and then they went on that four game run. Um, but at the same time, the team also won a couple games while he was injured, and they and they sunk to plus, and he balled out and he destroyed. Dakota Rain Prescott at home when that team had won 16 straight in Dallas and no one could beat them there. That is impressive. That is a catapult move for him. He is probably going to dethrone the prince that was promised to become the highest paid quarterback. So I have no problem with that. Are you are you you trying to push somebody off off of golf? Because I'm a fight for him. You got you got another quarterback you want to put in there? Or you no, nah, nah, put golf. I put golf. Okay. Because my thing about golf is he's been to a Super Bowl. He lost that Super Bowl by seven points to one of the cheating goats, Tom Brady. And he took the Lions to the playoffs two years in a row, and he took them to a championship game, something they haven't done in 30 years. He is a legacy for the team in the city. He doesn't have to buy a drink. And he threw up yards. The team's offense was great but stupid. Um, Their defense let them down late, but their offense was prolific. They should have beat the 49ers. They were up 27-7. to That's on Campbell and his stupid decisions and the defense. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaving golf up there. Now it's time for order. Right. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Before we get the order, we we omitted Purdy, right? Yep. Purdy's on the outskirts. Rogers right. on the outskirts. Take 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 Dak Dak off. Put Purdy in. Oh wow! You, you 
see, see now, see. Okay, look for the listeners. I'm gonna do it because you know this is America, and 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 and, and, and Iraq said it. So I don't want to fight him. I, I said he half my size, but he got bite. You know what I mean? He fighting. He's scrappy. So <laughs> I will say. Now, now you gonna leave Dak on this list over Love? Then even though I just said he whipped his ass home. Nope. In the, in the nope. D- Dak's off. Dak's, Dak's off the top there. Okay, so Dak is 11. Disrespect. Dak, Dak is a solid 11. D- disrespectfully, Dak is 11. So, all right. Now, as far as order is concerned, I'm going to give you my list and you just tell me if you, you're not going to agree with it. But um, I'm putting Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to put Josh Allen, even though I don't know what the offense is going to be, but he is a machine in himself. <laughs> He runs, he passes, he he plays through injury. The team has not had a losing record at, well, he's been on his run, and he's worked with multiple different wide receivers. So until I see him fall off with this new regime of offense that they give him, he has that team winning, and it's Buffalo is hard for him to win. So I, I'm just going to leave him there a second because uh, the only reason they keep losing is he loses to Patrick Mahomes every year in the playoffs. That's not too shabby, so I'm going to leave him there. Um where people are going to get mad at me is I'm going to go Lamar Jackson at third, and then I'm going to leave Jalen Hurts at four. So right now I got Patrick, Josh, Lamar, Jalen, and then I'm going to put uh, Burrow. Now Burrow is living off of the same kind of power that Jalen has. They were in one Super Bowl. He is the only quarterback in the playoffs to ever beat Patrick Mahomes. He's the only one. Jalen has made also one Super Bowl and then lost to Patrick Mahomes in that Super Bowl. But in that Super Bowl, he also outdueled him offensively as a as a QB. As a QB, Jalen's stats were better. He had the fumble, but his stats were just better than Mahomes. The, it's a team game. We know that. So that's why Jalen, for us and for people that give him credit for that, keep him so high. That's the reason Burrow's been so high. Because Burrow's had way more injuries than Jalen has, but people still regard him at that high level because he beat Patrick Mahomes. He that's fair. dueled with him. So... Patrick, Josh, Lamar, Jalen, and then um, Burrow. Then I'm going to leave C.J. Stroud at six. I, too, he is the new Warren Moon for me. He spins the ball. He's super sexy. They're young. He did that with a rookie offensive coach. I mean, rookie head coach. Um, Their offense coordinator came back. Their defensive coordinator came back. They got – they've used all their picks seemingly wisely. Last year, just a reminder for people, they start off like four and eight, went on a run, he, he was injured for two games. They won those two games, went in the playoffs, and shocked the world. They still came up short, but usually when you're picking first in the draft and you trade away your other pick and future picks to get another guy that early, you look like the Panthers. They don't look like the Panthers. They, they're, they're damn near looking like the new Bengals. So they, they flipped the squad tremendously. So CJ Stroud staying at six for me. You got a problem with that? No. Okay. Now, here's where we're going to fight. I, I'm taking Jared Goff at seven and moving Stafford down. And, again, I, I gave a little bit of the reason. Goff's been to the Super Bowl. He's turned the lines around. Their offense, I'm in St. Ra. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Ra, I'm, God, I can't even say his name. I'm out St. Brown. Is, I'm in Ra St. Brown. See, his dad's with their biblical names. He's amazing. They're amazing. They're, they're running backs. They've interchanged. They've just swapped out running backs. You think – it's going to hurt them. It, it seems like any running back they put in that position is helping them. Their offense is just their, their, their tight end. It looks great. Their offense coordinator stayed. All their coaches stayed. Nobody left Detroit. I feel like that offense is going to be something to be reckoned with. They didn't get the defense fix, which they did a lot of drafting. So I'm going to leave him at seven. And then it comes down to Brock Purdy, Love, and Stafford. So I leave Brock Purdy at eight, give him the same respect. He wins the Super Bowl and lost, but he's still soft, and we don't believe in him. We, I don't. Did you watch the receivers show on Netflix? I know you're busy. No, no, I haven't seen. No, so I watched it and I suffered through the pain of the episode where they beat down on the Eagles. But the biggest thing that brought me so much joy in my whole life is rewatching them lose to the Ravens, and um, not only losing to the Ravens. Oh wait, wait. They beat the Ravens. They didn't lose to the Ravens. They, 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 they. No, they lost to the Ravens, but they, they won in the playoffs. So when they lost to the Ravens, the one thing that happens every time they have a bad game is every single player walks up to Brock Purdy with those puppy dog look in his face says, it's okay. Be you. Have fun. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's okay. 
he is so managed as an individual because he knows he's the weakest link to your point of what you said. He doesn't command any presence when Jalen has a bad game or Jalen makes a mistake. No one's pandering to him to coach him up because he's already on it. He's out there with the pad. He knows he fucked up. Yeah. Like it, it's on him as a man. Purdy's like, I just, I'm just so happy to be here, guys. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry I let you down. Five interceptions. Golly gee, that's on me. And they can't even get <laughs> mad at him because they have to baby him. Like, yeah. it's funny, you know, you know how it is when, you're, when your quarterback's messing up. You watch other teams like Jared Goff threw a couple picks. They were on him. Like, yo, blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like, okay, that's how you normally get with a quarterback after three interceptions or so. You feel like it's a bad game. Now Brock Purdy, they coddle him all the way. So um, I'm going to put Stafford at eight, and I'm going to leave. Bro- I'm put Brock Purdy at ten, and I'm going to leave Love at nine. So we got Patrick, Josh, Lamar, Hurts, Burrow, CJ, Golf, um, Stafford, Love, and Brock. And that's our top 10. That's a good top 10. I mean, people are going to be mad about Dakota. I'm semi upset about it, but I do respect your decision. Again, you rock at erock.com, uh, 1177 Banana Street. If you have any problems, <laughs> you can feel so, free. So, so am I giving you my top now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, ahead, good. Ahead. You know the list now? Patrick. Uh, Burrow. Lamar. Josh Allen. CJ Stroud at five. I I am just I am just enamored with this kid. Stafford. Jalen Hurts. Okay. Uh Goff. Yeah. Brock Purdy. And then love. So first of all, again, if you want to listen to Iraq how he just disrespected Jalen Hurts on national television, I mean, no, that's not dis- that's not disrespecting Jalen Hurts. Uh, it, it's totally not disrespect. <laughs> I, I I laugh because I say the the Stafford loves right. So let's let, let me just do that real quick, right? So um, top five in the NFC quarterbacks, right? So in that list, we'd have Stafford. We'd have Love. We definitely have Dak in that. Um, we'd have Jalen and yeah, Brock, Golf and Brock, right? So Stafford, to me, out of all these, to be honest with you, is the problem I have. I'm giving him a little bit of a legacy. They did make the playoffs last year, and he did go on a run. But the last three years, he has been injury prone. And okay. though they, they've had that weapon of Puka come out, and they do have – the offensive weapons they have, they found a running back again. They always seem to find a running back. Stafford is out for three or four weeks a year now on average, given, if not more. And our old boy, buddy Carson Wentz, is now his backup. I don't believe in the Rams like the people believe in the Rams. People believe in Stafford like, you know, he's got some Super Bowl favor this year. And, I again, I don't like uh, recency. I like living off of recency. And he's not Joe Burrow-ish where – Joe gets hurt and he's out for a, a long period. I get it. I'm being a, I'm being a critic that way. I just believe in Joe more than I believe in Stafford. And Stafford is a Super Bowl champion. That's that's weird. I'm, I'm no, but it's, it's okay. It's okay. To, but Burrow's the better quarterback. Burrow's yeah, definitely okay. the better quarterback. So top five in the NFC. I'm number one in the NFC. What what, what was just, what was just my list here? So the, that was the whole league. I'm just talking about the NFC. So we got Love, Dak, Jalen, Golf, and Brock. I can't, I can't leave Dak out of the top. They they win 13 games a year. Yeah, no, no, I got, I got, I got no problem with that. I got no problem with that. Yeah, I hate Dak too, but so I, I personally, I'm you don't, you don't like it. I'm, I'm giving it to Golf again. I'm giving it Golf number one. I'm giving Jalen number two. I'm giving Brock number three. I'm giving. Uh, Dak number four, and I'm giving Love number five, top five in the NFC, and I and I I only base that on they also have a whole lot of weapons too, and uh, they're they're oh I'm, I'm lying Jalen should be number one I lied Golf should be number two they're gonna get screwed this year they got they got like a first place schedule coming up on their ass <laughs> yeah, it sucks when that happens doesn't it, it yeah the lions about to get eight up that's that's okay never mind I forgot about that 
Oh, how, how many wins we get in this season? Or early, early, early on the record? At least 12. 13. I'm going 13. Yeah. If, we, if, we get uh, uh, if you told I'm me 13, 14, I'd have no problem with it. No problem with it. So I, well, I do think – I want to go early on record. I do think this team is going to the Super Bowl. 100%. I'm convinced of it. This team is going to the Super Bowl. Whether they'll win it, I don't know. They might run into another buzzsaw like the Kansas City Chiefs. It might be Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills turn. The, you know, the, guy, the football gods might sm- finally smile upon the city of Buffalo. It might be the Baltimore Ravens. But I am absolutely convinced that this team won 10 games in spite of themselves due to coaching, and they got the best two possible candidates they could. And you can't take a look at this roster – and take a look at the six games that they had at the end of last year. Some, the math ain't math, and you can't show your work. It was coaching, and they got coaches now. And uh, with the last five minutes, I will reiterate that. Um, Saquon is going to fix those issues that we had with the issues that we had, and mm-hmm. then the coaches are going to fix the other issues because talent wasn't the issue. Not going wood for injuries. That's always a case in any sport and any team, but – Saquon, if you're worried about Saquon's injuries, remember he lived in trash panda land on the worst turf in the NFL that should be banned. And he's coming to green grass and green pastures and a soft cushiony landing here in Philadelphia with, oh, let me remind you, a thing called an offensive line. <laughs> and a thing called receivers and a thing called a quarterback. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want. I don't want to go too far. And push. I don't want to make you know because New York people are really upset right now. They're on hard knocks, getting killed every week, uh, killing themselves every week. But yes, we we are we are homeward bound to the Super Bowl now. Now, as far as that's concerned, I too believe that's why I tried to preface myself earlier when I said NFC Conference Championship game because I know we're going far this year. If if not to the Super Bowl, if not winning the Super Bowl, I know they're going deep. So I, I got them at thirteen wins. What do we do? If the Chiefs make it to the Super Bowl this year, like, do we riot? Do we uh, have a protest? Do we shut down airlines? Like, at this point, I'm really trying to figure out how much of the nation has to burn if this team makes it to another Super Bowl this year. Yeah, I, I, I haven't even gotten Chiefs, and they beat us in the Super Bowl. I haven't gotten Chiefs fatigue yet. I haven't gotten cheese fatigue the way I've the way I ended up getting Patriots fatigue. Like everybody was sick of Brady and Belichick at the end, and we were all just rooting for them to lose because we were sick of seeing them win. Yeah, it's been three Super Bowl. It's been the back to back thing. Okay, yeah, I, I I I get it, but they're not unlikable. You know, I still have a ton of respect for Andy Reid. I still have a ton of respect, even though Travis Kelsey is a bit of a cornball, and I'm you know everyone's sick of seeing. Ta- it doesn't bother me, but. Everyone's sick of seeing Taylor Swift up in the box when they cut to her for heaven forbid 15 seconds three times a game. You know, everyone gets all pissed off about it. I I I just I haven't and, and Brittany Mahal I I and and Jackson Mah- like I get it. I get it. I don't have Chiefs fatigue yet. So for all those listening or watching, uh, 103 y'all popped in here late. Appreciate y'all. We're gonna be heading out soon. But uh I would just like to reiterate so you can clip this and have this and put it in the memory bank. E Rock is a better human being than I am. He's a better person. <laughs> you might be tied for fatherhood, but as a person, like if you're falling off a cliff, even though I'm two times the size, you'd be better off asking him to help you than me. I think about it. He'd probably start helping. I'd be like, hey, look, I mean, what's your credit like? You know what I mean? What's your, <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask a couple questions first if I risk my life. Not nah, he. He's going to put his hand out there. He's a good person. Now, it's not about fatigue of the team. The Patriots were cheaters. They're low down, dirty scumbags. Not my goat, Joe Montana. My goat. That boy went four for four. Everybody tell about Michael Jordan never lost. Well, Joe Montana never lost. Never threw an interception. That is the goat. Okay, he ain't got no flat balls. He ain't got no uh, uh, cheating scandals. No videotapes. No VHS coming out. The, the, the Patriots are the cheaters of the nation. They don't deserve any kind of credit whatsoever. My fatigue with them is because they're dirt balls and scum buckets, and I can't stand them. Now the Chiefs are a problem because. I want to win. All right. It's I don't like going out and playing basketball against my dad when I was six years old. He kept swatting my shit like he was Shaquille O'Neal. I'm like, bro, I just want to win a game. I had to wait till I was 15 to get a growth spurt to come and dunk on you to get a gun. No, 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 dog. 
That's the Chiefs. The Chiefs are out here sunning people, and I'm tired of that. I, I ain't got no fatigue. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, the Kermit the Front, all they do, all they want to do. They're great, lovely people. I love Andy Reid. So happy he's out there eating cheeseburgers instead of cheesesteaks. I'm happy for the man, okay? Turn his life, turn his life around. Got some championships. That's not a problem. The problem is, if they get there, we get there. Now I got to worry. That's the problem. That well, you should be worried about the Chiefs. They're, they're a good team with a good coach and a good court and a, a Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame. Right? I, I so let me put, your, let me put your mind at rest. Let me put your mind at rest. We beat them last year with Bobo coaches. We did. We did. So they're, so they're not they're not an unbeatable juggernaut. You're not walking into a meat grinder and ground beef's coming out the other side. Like, you stack the Eagles roster against the Chiefs roster. And, okay. Well, and, and, well, if that's the case, I will say this. If that comes to fruition, I, I expect – that the the Kelsey brothers, um, Jason Kelsey, the one we need, better be in attendance, giving that negative force to the Taylor Swift power that the media pulls like the sun. Okay, I that's what I'm afraid of. You, I, I know I didn't say I didn't like her. I'm just saying that when the nation is swaying back and forth and hips side to side and they're singing these songs that nobody listens to over 12 years old. It's a force to be reckoned with, and I don't want to yeah. deal with that. I would, I, I rather, I rather circle the wagons against the Buffalo Bills personally. You know what I mean? Just happy to be here, guys. Haven't been here in a long time. Uh, threatening Jim Kelly for another Super Bowl loss. Uh, Joe Burrow, okay. Eminem came out here. Uh, he can take with another L. He's young. It's fine. Uh, Lamar Jackson, hey, you finally stopped being the seventy six of the NFL. And you made it to a Super Bowl, but you can take this L. That's what I want. Yeah. But what I don't want. Is uh 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 Michael Jeffrey Jordan uh White Havlicek out here getting a three peat on my ass and ruining my day? So I, like I said, yeah, I hear you. Everything you say be right at the time. I just, I don't want it. I want. It's not for teams. I just, I, I really feel like this year the way this team is setting itself up, and I, I'll be completely honest with you, the Knicks. This is me being. Uh, toxic and petty as a man, Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts not being super buddy buddy actually makes me feel good about it. It makes me feel good about like a work relationship where it's like, bro, I'm doing my job, do your job. Because I do feel yeah. like Nick gets a little too happy, rah rah sometimes where Jalen's got to be like, yo, calm down. I feel like Jalen's gonna be like, yeah, you want to go dance it out, go dance it out, bro. I I'm doing my job, you do your thing. And I feel like the team has got to a point where like, hey, everybody messed up last year. We were all embarrassed. I have no time to go back to there because no matter what you say, everyone got blamed. You know, AJ Brown's got to go on the radio and be like, yo, why are y'all talking about me like this? I never did anything like that. I never said anything like that. How he went and paid everybody. We have no problems, no calls. CD Lamb out here looking for cheeseburgers and water bottles to sell on the side of the street because the Cowboys can't pay nobody. So we are set. We're ready to roll. And I need this George W. I, I need a whole lot of George W's. I need the Super Bowl victory. So uh, thanks for coming on, E. I'm glad we settled a whole lot of things. Again, any problems, uh, erock.com at erock.com, www. And uh, it is now Saquon. Uh, he has no last name. It is just like Prince. It is Saquon. That's, that's what we say. Uh, <laughs> I will link Erock in, in, the, in the comment section on the thing. Again, any problems you have in life, just put it on E. Okay? He, he's, a, he's a small man with broad shoulders. He can, I can, he can take it. He I can, can take, take it. Uh, <laughs> like, share, subscribe, make yourself useful. Thanks for spending some time with me, buddy. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me, bud. I appreciate it.